Hey guys, it's Girl Got Game, and we have some exciting music to welcome us back to Psychedelica of the Black Butterfly, which is appropriate considering our next route is the master of the house himself, Mr. Hakage. So I'm starting off in the prologue just to reacquaint ourselves with how we met this boy, and then we'll get into flowchart shenanigans again, probably, because we've got short stories and all kinds of jumping around to do. From what I understand, Hikage's route is actually pretty short, so we'll, we'll see what we got in store for us. Anyway, we're being chased by a monster right now because we just arrived. <sighs> Oops, buttons. I sprint away at full speed trying to escape. Why is it following me? And what's the deal with this mansion? I look ahead but can't seem to locate the end of the hallway. My surroundings all start to look the same as I run. What am I going to do? It's going to catch up! Turn out a corner, maybe? What if it's a dead end? I'm getting tired and starting to slow down. As if in contrast, the monster starts to pick up its own pace. Now what? Ah! Suddenly, something grabs my flailing arms and drags me into the shadows. No! Somebody help! Keep it down. Mm. <laughs> Whoever it is, they cover up my mouth. In response, I look over at the owner of the hand. Hello? There he is. We're in red. Got a theme going on. The monster has bad eyesight. You can give it the slip if you hide. I nod and the person removes his hand from my mouth. He takes a cautious look around the hallway from behind the pillar. So there are other people here. Holding my breath, I pull him in close. As I do, I can sense that the monster is now close by. Having lost sight of its prey, the beast stops and starts to look around. Please, go away, please. Maybe someone was listening. Maybe the person next to you. After standing still for a short while, the monster tromps off elsewhere. Phew. It's gone. Thank goodness. The man pushes me away by the shoulders and gives the area a cautious look. Um, uh, what was that thing? She was just a normal girl at first. Uh, no. Well, she had this strange mask on, so maybe she wasn't quite normal. But then she turned into that monster! Calm down. I don't know what's going on either. Do you know where we are? I just woke up and found myself here. Hold on. Let's talk about this someplace else. Huh? That thing might come back. We've got to get out of here. Alright, let's get to know each other. Should be safe over there. We can run for it if something happens. Right. We walk to a place with a wide view of the area. Hidden behind a pillar, we take a good look at one another. I'm glad I found someone I can talk to. Um... Can we talk now? Hmm. About where we are. Oh... For a moment, he looks slightly confused, and then slowly opens his mouth. I just woke up and found myself here, too. I was in a room up ahead, but I realized something was off here after I looked around a bit. He's in the same situation as me, then. And you? What are you doing here? I... um... Don't know. How about your name? You look like you're still a student. Do you know how old you are? When I try to remember, a sharp pain shoots through my head. I have no memory. I can't remember my birthday or my parents' faces. Do you not remember anything either? N no I don't. Wait, either? Yeah. It's the same for me. I don't know when I came here or what I was doing. 
I can't even remember who I am. I was hoping you might have had some recollection of something. Then... we both have amnesia. Huh. Sounds too crazy to be true. Guess it is, though. The man gives a quick laugh and rummages through his pockets. What are you doing? Looking for an ID or something. Thought I might find something useful. Oh, that reminds me. I didn't check my clothes. I slip my hand into my skirt pocket to see if anything is inside. My hand grazes something cold and hard. Is this... a cell phone? I remove the phone from my pocket and press the power button. The first thing I notice is the time. What? 8974? Feeling shaken by the obvious error, I flip through the phone's menus. I can't find anything meaningful. But then I open my message inbox. Oh! There's a single message. I'm pretty much grasping at straws by this point, so I open the message to check its contents. Locate the kaleidoscope shards. Kaleidoscope shards? Doesn't seem like a code or anything. You don't remember anything like this? No, I don't. I don't get it. Like a literal kaleidoscope. Or maybe it's referring to something completely different. I hand him the phone and he repeats the message on the screen. There's no sender info for it. What could it mean? This cell phone is weird too. Did you find anything on your end? I have a cell phone too. Only one message on it from an unknown sender. What did it say? There is only one way to leave the manor. Nothing else. Only one way to leave the manor. Seems like somebody put us in the situation. We wouldn't have messages like this otherwise. Could someone be watching us right now? I don't see cameras anywhere. Suddenly, I hear some sort of howl from far away. It makes me jump in fright. It's okay. That was far away. Y yeah you're right. We can't stay here, though. Otherwise, we'll run into that thing again. We have to find the exit. Exit? As in the main exit? Oh, I know the way! You do? If he just means the entrance, then... All right. Seems like it's clear. Come on out. Okay. The man signals for me to step out from cover. We return to the main hall, and I am once again captivated by its magnificence. You're lucky you woke up in the main hall. Hmm. Maybe I'd have thought so, if not for the whole attacked by a monster thing. Seems like getting chased up and down the halls like that is actually pretty rotten luck, if you ask me. Anyways, let's head outside. He pushes the big, heavy door as hard as he can. Ugh. It won't open. The door won't budge. No! I rush up to help him. Weak as I am, though, I'm of no help in moving the sturdy door. All I'm able to do is rattle the brass door handles. No way! Could it be locked from outside? I take a few steps back and survey the whole door. I see something unusual in the corner of my eye. A black butterfly? A black butterfly, wrapped in a gloomy shadow, flutters before me and then vanishes. I feel a frightful unease. What the heck is going on? Hey! Snap out of it! What? His voice calls out to me and returns me to my senses. I follow his line of sight, and... <laughs> the monstrous beast from earlier is slowly making its way back to where it came from. We have to run! It's no use. We're surrounded. What are you... I look across the manor and see a similar monster growling as it approaches us. What do we do? 
They're so close, they'd catch us even if we try to make a run for it. Ah! My body freezes in fear and the monster's claws streak down towards me. Ugh. But there is no pain. Instead, I see that the man has protected me, a crimson streak of blood oozing from his arm. I... I... I said to snap out of it! Do you want to die? I... I'm sorry! <sighs> his clothes are wet with blood as he groans in pain. He's bleeding so badly! It's my fault for freezing up! The scent of iron and the sight of the dripping blood forces me to accept that this is reality. What now? Spying an opportunity, the monster leaps up and brings its arm down upon us. However... This is the end! I close my eyes, waiting for the impact. But... What? The next moment, I realize that the one who got struck wasn't me. An earth-shattering scream rends the air, and then the monster is on the ground squirming as it melts away. Up until a moment ago, it was a solid thing, but now it shimmers like some kind of heat haze with a black outline. Before long, the giant body shatters into a kaleidoscope of black butterflies, which are absorbed into the necklace of the person now standing at the top of the stairwell. Who is that? Looking so cool. From a few meters away, a man holding a man holds a gun at the ready. The fat fox mask of grief he wears prevents me from seeing his facial expression. Did he save us? Or <gasps> I try to approach him, but he turns away and shoots the other monster down without hesitation. It turned into black butterflies again. As if they have found a place to die, the butterflies are drawn up into the necklace. The man in the mask takes the necklace between his fingers and raises it up to eye level. After checking something carefully, he makes to walk away without a word. Wait! Do you live here? Why are you wearing that mask? Hey, are you crazy? Look at how suspicious that guy is. But I... The man in the fox mask looks briefly at us as we mutter to one another. Apparently losing interest, he disappears into the second floor hallway. Oh, you're so reckless. You can hardly protect yourself, but you're still trying to chat up strangers. We don't even know if he's on our side. I'm sorry. He did save us from that monster, though. Oh no! Your arm! You're bleeding badly! It hurts a bit, but the cut didn't go as deep as it looks. Let's just think about how to get out of here. But... No time to treat the wound. If those things attack us again, our lives will be in danger. Okay. As he turns towards the door, I try to think of what to do next. That's when I notice something shining where one of the monsters used to be. What's this? A glass shard? It's all glittery. How beautiful. What are you doing? Oh, nothing! I put the glittery thing into my pocket and turn my attention to the door behind me. This thing just won't budge. Could it be locked? Hard to say. It's an extremely thick door, but the design's pretty simple. If I slam into it, I might just be able to pry it open. Stand back. Stand back? He gestures me away with his chin and then slams into the door with his uninjured shoulder. There he goes. He really does make it look pretty good, doesn't he? <sighs> One more time! He rams into the door over and over again, but it remains tightly shut. If you keep that up, you're gonna hurt your other arm! Let's try to think of something else! 
But... The monsters might notice us again if we keep making this much noise. Yeah, you're right. We take a few steps back to survey the entrance. The double doors have hinges in three sections. Just as he said, it looks like it could be broken by force. It sure isn't going to be that easy, though. There's no lock on the inside where you'd expect one. And if the door won't move, that must mean... Somebody barred it up from outside. <laughs> that does make the most sense, I guess. Well, hello, droopy-eyed man. It's been a hot minute. Okay. Since we just did all of this with Kagiha last route, I'm going to actually go into my flow chart and skip ahead a little bit. Um, I think here when we run out to go save these two nuggets, we can do that. Do a little bit of that. Uh, yeah, this is fine. I'll just skip... Whoops, I'll skip some of this. Okay, so they're freaking out. <laughs> yelling at each other. Alright, and here's our boy of the hour. You're so short-sighted, I'm at a loss for words. What? Why are you here? Told you I wouldn't be able to sleep at night if I just left you for dead, didn't I? If you rush out there now, it'll be a repeat of what happened earlier. Yes, I suppose. I'm at a loss for what to do as the monsters bear down on those two men. Finally, after what feels like an eternity, a monster moves in and swings its arm towards one of the men. Woo! He jumps backwards to avoid the attack, but bumps into the door when he does. These things are trying to kill us! Ah! Well, in that case... Hey, monsters! Eat him first! He's a total meathead, so even his brains ought to be quite delicious! Give me a break! Don't offer me up to him! You brought it up, so you go first! Oh no, I don't want to die yet! The two glare at one another as the monster prepares for another swing. The next attack is sure to hit one of them. What am I gonna do? If only I had some kind of weapon! Yeah, like the person in the fox mask. If I had a weapon, like a gun, a weapon, a gun. If I had that gun, I would be unstoppable. I could play a mini game. What? There is a flash before my eyes and a heavy metallic object appears in my tightly gripped hand. What? What is this? It's a handgun. The feel of the cold metal in my hand makes me panic. How can this be? I didn't have this before. What did you do? Where'd you take that thing from? It just... appeared. I wanted to help those two, and then I remembered the gun that the man in the fox mask had, and then... My mind is a jumble. I don't know how to explain. The weapon is in your hands. Huh? That's what my message said. I guess it was referring to this. Oh, that's true. It did say that. Remember the gun? I just have to imagine it? He mumbles to himself and looks down. He quietly breathes in and out. What? No way! Like magic, a mysterious light glows in his hand, and then a gun materializes in it. I can't believe that actually worked. What's going on here? I... I don't know. The man grips the gun in his right hand, checking the trigger, cylinder, and so forth. With each step, his brow becomes more and more furrowed. It's no toy. It's fully loaded. This is a real weapon. Meaning... Meaning we can fight them with these. Maybe. As he finishes speaking, the monsters emit another massive roar. I see them raise their thick arms up, taking aim at their prey. Come on! Alright. Let's go. 
Oh, your evil eye is showing, Hikage. Let's see if I can fare any better here. No is the answer so far. Come on, just lock on. I think I need a new mouse too. <laughs> not, no excuses, but I feel like my mouse is not behaving the way it should be. And it's not just with this game, but just in general. General use, it's been a little slow to respond. Of course, it could just be me that's slow to respond. Who knows? on to any of these at all. I think I'm actually doing worse as time goes on. Yeah, I could have done better, Hikage. <laughs> I will admit. Well, only eight got No way! <laughs> I am. <laughs> I'm a crack shot at this achievement. <laughs> Here I am being like, ah, I'm making excuses. My mouse is kind of laggy. Oh man, this is hoof. You hate to see it. <laughs> and I finally hit S. <laughs> this is what happens when you date the master of the manor. He's like, you know what? I'll get you on my good side. <laughs> Girl, don't worry about it. <laughs> I love it. Struck by our weapons, the monsters give out a death yowl as their physical shapes dissipate. <sighs> Did we beat them? Yeah. Looks like it. What a relief. The monsters melt into a kaleidoscope of black butterflies, which are absorbed into the accessories we're wearing. They went into my butterfly hairpin. Is it safe to leave it like this? Actually... I'm feeling a little breathless. Ugh. <sighs> so right from the beginning she's affected like this. Interesting. I've forgotten. You okay? Yes. Just... A little out of breath. My body feels heavy. Not physically, but in some kind of emotional way. Okay, so she actually says right from, the, right from here. Okay. The feel of the handgun, the smell of the spent gunpowder, the fear I felt as those monsters bore down on me, their dying screams. The assault on my senses coalesces into an intense fatigue that overtakes my body. I just killed those monsters. Okay, I think that's a good place again. So let's go back into our flow chart. Let's see, when do we have alone time with our boy again? Is this when... Kagiha comes to chat with us? Let me just see. I think, yeah, this is, this is that one. Okay, we just did that, so we don't have to do that again. Um, now is this? No, these are all our dailies, so we don't have to worry about any short episodes there. Okay, so this will be our first choice. Who we're going to explore the mansion with. So we'll go to that scene next. Sorry, we gotta jump around a bit. Damn, Benny Yuri, that's awesome! You've completely mastered it. Yeah, I finally caught up to all of you. The following day, voices of admiration surround me as I show them my gun. They're praising me so much. I guess all that practice was worth it. All the trouble you had up till yesterday seems unbelievable now. Did you have some sort of breakthrough? Um... It's all thanks to Yamato's help. <clears throat> oh, he looked away from me. Maybe I ought to keep it a secret. Beniuri. Oh, no! I was just practicing a bunch and finally figured it out. Uh-huh. No kidding. This means all of us can make our weapons appear. 
Monster hunting time at last. Monster hunting. Those words quickly take on a new sense of reality as tension grips the room. No matter how we look at it, this is going to be dangerous, so let's split into teams for now. Indeed, that would be best. So, how are we going to divvy ourselves up? Same teams as last time sounds good to me. Hmm. Why don't we give preference to what the lady would like? What would you like to do, Beniri? Let's see. The person I want to go with is... This boy. He gives me good luck with the uh, minigames. I think it'd be a good idea to go with the person I've already killed monsters with. Yeah, see, me, me and Beniri are on the same wavelength there. I want to go with Hakage. Is that alright? Uh, me? Hikage's brow twitches as I share my feelings. Okay, I guess it's not mutual. He doesn't like it. You don't want to? Am I a burden? I know I'm the one who suggested we go in teams, so I don't exactly mind, but... But what? I'd prefer going with somebody more dependable. Oh, come on! I got an S rank last time! I'm dependable, even, even though you probably just gave it to me because you felt bad, but still! Huh? What did you just say? Nothing. Off we go. Hmm. That reply bugs me. Still a bit uncertain, I strike out into the gloomy manor alongside Hakage. Really? You're bugged by the fact he called you undependable? <laughs> I wonder why. We make our way down the hall, carefully surveying our surroundings. From the moment we took our first step out of the hideout, I've had an uncomfortable sense that someone has had their eye on us. Last time, our goal was to explore. Now we're trying to find the monsters so we can fight them. Thinking about it, I'm struck by furious waves of anxiety. I'm afraid. Hikage seems okay, but I do hope he's really alright. Peeking at the side of his face, I remember how he reacted when I suggested that we go together. He didn't look very happy. I'm always making trouble for him, so maybe he doesn't like me. I let out a sigh, trying to keep it quiet. When I do, he suddenly stops walking right in front of me. What? I can feel you staring a hole through me. Um... If you've got something on your mind, say it with your mouth, not your eyes. Kinda hard for me to tell otherwise. I can't run from such a straightforward request. He's right. Since we're working together, it's better if we don't keep any bad feelings hidden from each other. I wanted to ask you something, Hikage. About earlier. Earlier? When I asked to go with you, you looked like you weren't very happy about it. I was just wondering why. Do you... not like me? His eyes widen as if he is totally taken aback by my words. His face quickly returns to normal and he stares at me in confusion, his eyes narrowed. Do you have some kind of victim complex? I don't remember saying anything of the sort. No, you didn't say anything directly, but maybe I'm overthinking this. I still need to know, though. You're right, though. I didn't want to go with you. Huh? Oh, I knew it. But it isn't because I dislike you. It's because you're not reliable. <laughs> ah, my heart just broke. Uh. He doesn't mince words. I'm concerned you might not be understanding me when I say that you're unreliable. It's not just you. I think all girls are weak and unreliable. I'm worried I won't be able to protect you by myself. How did you simultaneously insult me and yet also made me feel kind of bad for you because you're like, oh, I eat you. you you're, like, worried that you can't protect me by yourself. But at the same time, hey, I got an S rank, sir. 
I'm I'm reliable. I'm not weak. I mean, yeah, it took me like 15 tries to get there, but I got there. Huh? Then... I'm not built like Yamato. I'm not quick-thinking like Kurosaba. And I'm not as considerate towards you as Kagiha. Thinking about it logically, you'd be safer picking somebody else. Mm-hmm. Hikage. I see. That's why he... Then you don't hate me. I'm glad. <laughs> Relief floods through me upon hearing what he really thinks. The muddled thoughts lurking deep in my heart completely disappear. He said he was worried about protecting me. I was glad to hear that, but still. If something happens, you don't need to protect me. Just run away. Huh? It'd be pointless for both of us to die. I'll do whatever I can, but if you think you don't have a chance to beat the monster, just... Now this is something I do hate about you. Huh? You think self-sacrifice is some kind of virtue? If you're the one dying, sure, you might be fine with it. But it's the people left behind who have to live with the guilt. You really want to be considerate of your friends. Don't give up till the very end. Don't give up on your life. Hikage. Why is he reacting like this? Usually, he'd just say something sarcastic and brush me off. I'm a little taken aback at the passion behind his words. He's right, though. I don't want to make trouble for others, but I shouldn't say leave me behind and run as lightly as I did either. Yeah. You're right. Sorry. I shouldn't give up until the very end. <laughs> Let's do everything we can to get out of here in one piece! Hikage, who had been frozen in place staring at me, suddenly breaks into a warm smile. That honesty of yours is a virtue. Aww. Well, we're trying to break through? Maybe? <laughs> I'm being optimistic here. I really don't know how a romance with this guy is going to play out. I mean, other than the fact that we're probably staying here. But are we going to find out he was bad, or is he just going to... Cut things short before the big reveal. I don't know. From the central stairway at the manor's entrance, we make our way up to the second floor. The sight that greets us after climbing the stairs causes me to gasp. <gasps> wow! What is this? Masks upon masks. One of the hallway's walls is lined with exotic masks, each luxuriously adorned with precious stones. And not just one or two of them. The entire side of the hallway is decorated with countless numbers of them. What do you think they are? Looks like it might be the Master's Collection. Okay, I know we speculated on that with the other two guys, but hearing you say that, that's basically confirmation. A collection of masks? That's so creepy. It's like a line of severed heads. We make our way down the hallway bathed in countless stairs. However far we walk, there are faces, faces, faces. I cast a sideways glance at the wall and I match the, I match the gaze of a mask whose mouth is curled into a faint smile. Chills run down my spine. Hey, Beniuri. Uh, yes? I am distracted by the decorations on the wall, but the sound of Hakage's voice brings me back to my senses. There's someone there. <gasps> You're right! A small boy is standing alone a little ways down the hallway. Okay, this is our first boy that we've run into. He is facing away from us, his face completely hidden. All I can make out is that he is wearing a school uniform. What now? We could still turn back. I peek to my side and see that Hikage has already started advancing, gun in hand. Yeah, no point in running away. 
I hold my hand out and will my gun into existence, wrapping my fingers tightly around it before hurrying after Hikage. Wow, I was actually surprised she's like, gun at the ready, not like, it's a child, sir! Interesting. Who's there? Keeping vigilant, we approach the boy. When he senses our presence, he slowly turns our way. <laughs> He's wearing a mask, too! <laughs> Having turned to face us, I can see that his face is hidden with a cat mask. While I can't make out his expression, he doesn't seem to be hostile towards us. Who are you? Oh, you can speak. Duh. Are you trying to make fun of me? No, no, I didn't mean it like that. Right. Usagi can speak, too. Who are you? What's your name, kid? Beats me. I can't remember. Do you remember anything at all, then? Where you live, your age, something about your family? Nope. Nothing at all. Sometimes I kind of feel like I'm about to remember, but then... I see. He's just like us. Well, in any case, it's dangerous here. There are monsters in this mansion. Monsters? Yeah. They look like a bunch of shadows gathered together. Seen something like that anywhere? Oh yeah, over there. What? Where? There. We take a few steps in the direction the boy is pointing and see a snuffling, wriggling black mass behind a pillar. Finally! Right there! W wait We should take this boy somewhere safe first before we- Huh? When I look back at him, the boy is nowhere to be found, so he vanished too. Huh? Where'd he go? What are you staring at? Come on! Oh, okay! Alright, time to be reliable. I'll make you proud, boy, somehow. Eh. Come on. Eh. Come on. Come on. Lock on. Lock on for me. Oops. I'm, I'm scrolling over the shoot button by accident. I don't like that it's in the corner of the screen. I know why it's there, but I don't like it. I keep accidentally hitting it with my mouse. And I'm trying to get these to lock on. Okay, there we go. How did I do? What's the verdict? How did I manage to hit more but get an A this time? <laughs> I don't understand. I had less misses, but I only got an A? Boo, so much for being reliable. I, I failed, sorry. <laughs> the defeated monsters melt away into a kaleidoscope of fluttering black butterflies. As we stare into them, the mass splits into two. It really did. Just as they did before, they are sucked up into our accessories. <sighs> At that moment, fatigue overcomes me, and I crouch dr down, breathless. Doing all right? Yeah. I'll manage. What about you? Luckily, I'm not as tired out by it as you. I see. Hakage nails down and picks up the kaleidoscope shard lying on the ground. He stands back up and hands it to me. This is a shard of the kaleidoscope. It's identical to the one you had before. Yeah. 
I guess the monsters really do have them. I'm glad we were able to find it. The glass shard glitters with a wondrous light. My face, blotted with exhaustion, is reflected in its surface. Maybe using our power makes you fatigued. Or it could be because of the black butterflies. Regardless, if you're using up all your strength like this, we won't be able to defeat too many of these monsters in a single day. Sorry. I'm getting in the way again. Being tired is proof that you gave it all you had. Don't apologize like that. Still, I wish I had more energy. Hikage isn't even breathing heavily. Why am I the only one like this? What happened to that virtue of yours? Huh? I'm complimenting your tenacity. Just accept it. <laughs> I'm stunned by the words he's throwing at me. But at the core of those words is kindness, and they spread warmth throughout my heart. Yeah. That's the kind of person he is. He gives people a hard time, but he goes out of his way to take care of them. What are you smiling about? Nothing! You're just... being you. I can't help it. Mm -hmm. That reminds me. Didn't Yamato say he learned how to make the gun appear from Hakage? That means that, in a way, he taught me how to do it too. Poor Yamato. Yamato taught you how to do it. He told me not to apologize, but saying thank you should be fine. Thank you, Hakage. I really appreciate it. I don't understand you. <laughs> I don't blame you. You don't have to. If he did, he might say something back again. The sight of him standing confused, head cocked slightly to the side, makes me smile. Whatever. We got the shard, so let's head back. The others should be there by now. Yeah, let's go. Hikage pulls me back to my feet. As we make our way back to the hideout, I find myself worrying about the young boy who disappeared. <laughs>